Let's look a little bit at the market for hamburgers. So this is this is the supply and the demand curve for the for the price and the quantity of hamburgers sold per day. And so if we have a completely unfettered market, no intervention, no taxes, nothing like that, then we see we have an equilibrium price and an equilibrium quantity. The equilibrium price, the equilibrium price looks like it's about three dollars and seventy-five cents per hamburgers per hamburger. The equilibrium quantity. Looks like it's about a little bit more. Excuse me, if I draw that line a little bit differently, the equilibrium quantity looks like it's about three dollars, or sorry, it's about three and a half million hamburgers per day. And we just to review what we've talked about before, up here between between the demand below the demand curve and above the price above the you say price equals three dollars seventy five line right over here. This is how much value. This is how much benefit the consumers are getting above and beyond what they have to pay. So that is the consumer surplus, consumer surplus. And then between this price equals 375 line and the supply curve, you have your producer surplus. So this is how much more the producers are getting for each hamburger relative to what their opportunity cost of producing that incremental hamburger was. So this right over here is the producer surplus. Producer surplus. Now let's say, and actually these numbers, these numbers are quasi-realistic. The, the, I have a three and a half million hamburgers per day. I actually looked it up before this video. It looks like McDonald's, at least based on the information I got, sold a little, sells a little bit over four million hamburgers per day in the United States. So I didn't clarify whether this is just hamburgers from one vendor or multiple vendors, but it's not a crazy number of hamburgers to sell in a fairly large country. But for the sake of this, it's not necessarily McDonald's hamburgers. We're just talking about this is the total market for hamburgers in a country. We're making the, the kind of the simplifying assumption that all hamburgers are created equal which we know is not true. Now, the government in this in this hypothetical civilization says, "Wow, a lot of a lot of hamburgers are being sold. Uh, we need we need to we 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 need more revenue for the government to to do other things or maybe to pay off their debt or whatever they need to do." And so they decide to tax hamburgers. They want to tax hamburgers and they're going to make it very simple. They're not going to do a percentage. Most sales taxes tend to be a percentage of the price. But instead, they're just going to do a, a tax of $1 per hamburger. $1 per hamburger. Per hamburger. So let's think about what this does to, 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 to the surplus, to the price at which transactions will go on, and what people will have to pay versus what they will have to get. So at any given point, at any given point, so if we look at the supply curve right over here, when we talked, in order to get someone to produce that very first hamburger, they have to get at least $2 for it, because that's their opportunity cost. They could use those exact same resources, the land, the labor, whatever else, to produce something else that has $2 of value. So you have to pay them at least $2 in order for them to produce hamburgers. And the more hamburgers you want the suppliers to produce, you have to pay them more and more for those incremental hamburgers, because they're going to start using resources that might have been better and better for, used for other things, and that are not as efficiently used for hamburgers. You have to pay them more and more and more. So this is what the, the supply curve that I originally drew right over here in Magenta is what the suppliers need to see in order to produce a certain quantity. If you want them to produce three million hamburgers, you have to pro you have to get them, you have to pay, be willing to pay three dollars per hamburger because that's their opportunity cost of those incremental hamburgers up here. Now let's think about what happens when you add the tax. This is what the suppliers are going to get, but or the producers are going to get, but when you put a tax, the consumers are going to have to pay a dollar more. So in or, over here, in order to produce this much, the suppliers are going to have to get are going to have to get three dollars per hamburger, but then the consumers are going to have to pay a dollar more. So they're going to have to pay one dollar more. In order to get the suppliers to produce two million hamburgers, you're going to have to pay them this much. You're going to have to pay them about two fifty. But then the consumers are going to have to pay a dollar more than that. So they're going to have to pay that much. In order to get them to produce it all, you're going to have to pay at least two dollars. But then if, you're, if the suppliers, if the producers are getting two dollars, the consumers are going to have to pay a dollar more for the tax. So they're going to have to pay a dollar more. So one way to think about it is the supply curve from the consumer's point of view is going to be shifted a dollar more than the supply curve from the producer's point of view. So it's going to be shifted up one dollar. So it's going to be look it's going to look something I could do a better job than that. It's going to look something it's going to look something like that. Where at every point, because this is a fixed dollar, it's not a percentage, at every point this distance right over here is going to be is going to be one dollar. 
So what happens there? From the consumer's point of view, from the consumer's point of view, what we have is now a new price that they're willing to consume at. Because now this 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 reality is not possible anymore. This reality, there's no way for the consumers to pay 350 and for the producers to see 350 as well. And so we get to a new a new, I guess, uh, equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity now. Because now, since this is from the consumer's point of view, the point at which they intersect is right over there, which is about, it's a little bit over $4 per burger, and it's a slightly lower quantity. It's about, let's just say, just for round numbers, that's about 3 million burgers per day. So what happened? What happened there? Well, before this whole area was a total surplus. Below this green line was the producer surplus, above the green line, and below this curve right here was the consumer surplus. Now we've lost part of it. We've lost, we've lost this part right over here. So this is our deadweight loss. This is no longer part of the total consumer and producer surplus. So that is deadweight loss. So the, the taxation got us from a an efficient situation where we had that kind of maximum consumer and producer surplus. Dead weight, this is our dead weight loss over here. And how much revenue is the government going to get now? Well, if we assume that this is 3 million, they're going to have 3 million burgers. They're going to have 3 million burgers. So this is 3 million right over here. They're going to have 3 million burgers times a times dollar per burger. So let me do it this way. So this is. So this length right over here is going to be the area of this rectangle that I'm doing in orange. So this length right over here is 3. That length right over there is 3 million. And then the height is that dollar. The height is the dollar. So let me shade it in. The height is that dollar right over there. So this is going to be $1 in height. So the tax revenue that the government is going to get is 3 million times $1, or 3 million burgers times $1, which is going to be $3 million per day. $3 million per day, which is interesting because maybe the government official thought they were going to get more because they look at the projections. They said, wait, there's going to be 3.5 million burgers sold per day, so I'm going to get $3.5 million. But what they didn't realize is that they're making the burgers more expensive. So there's going to be a lower quantity there's going to be a lower quantity demanded. The actual, the actual clearing quantity or the actual equilibrium quantity now is only going to be 3 million. And the way we see it, it, it removed this surplus here from both the consumer surplus and and the producer surplus, and, and no one's getting that. Not even the, the government's getting that. So no one's getting that white part right over there. And this orange part right over here is eating into the, the consumer surplus. So now they're paying more. They're paying more than, they're, or another way to think about it is the difference between the benefit they're getting, the benefit they're getting, and what they're paying at any given point for any given incremental consumer is now less, and the producer surplus is less. The, the excess of what they're getting for each hamburger versus their opportunity cost is now less. So the producer surplus has now been shrunken back to this area right over here. And these are curves here, so we can't just do simple geometry to figure out the area of triangles. You would actually have to do a little calculus to figure out the area of these curves. And then the consumer surplus has been pushed back to this area above the orange right over here. So you see, governments for the most part, have to do some type of taxation in order to get revenue. And it could be income tax, or it could be a sales tax like this right over here. But when they do it, it gets us into a non-efficient state. And it does, it does cause some, depending on the, how these curves are shaped, it does cause some dead weight loss. Some benefit in excess of what had to be paid, some of that disappears. But it allows at least the government to get revenue, depending on whether you think that's a good thing or not.